I just realized my favorite puzzle in the entire Zelda franchise is inside of the Temple of the Ocean King. I don't know how to feel about my life anymore. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Last time, we explored the surrounding areas to the Temple of the Ocean King, uncovered many a collectible, and then went back inside, finding the coolest sea chart I ever did see. It's of the Southwestern Sea, a place that we had already charted ourselves, but it was missing some details that the Temple of the Ocean King's secrets were able to tell us about. This time, oh, it's you. Special delivery, watch out, incoming. This is a letter from Salvatore. Ahem, here's what he says. Greetings, Link. No doubt you are waiting for a note from me, the master of diversions. So come by again. I mean, if you want. Play a game or two. What, got better things to do. I'll be waiting. Where else am I going to go? I'll be the guy staring at the sea, bored out of my mind. Sincerely yours, Salvatore. Do Wisdom gem! Radiates wisdom, but it can't be used like this. And that's the end of it. Got all that, sir? Then I'm out of here. And good riddance to you. You no longer have that sense of intrigue now that I know what you are thanks to the comments, so, um... Sorry, buddy, you have no redeeming qualities anymore. We, I don't think, really have any more ship parts that we have yet to use. I'd like to check in at least a little bit. Nothing new. The Demon Chimney and the Pillar Handrail are the only ones that we don't have. We have a uh, thousand rupees, so it would not be out of the question to... Hello. Uh, you're back for revenge, huh? After what I said to you. This is a letter from Edo of Cannon Island. Ahem. Ready for this? Hey, you, Link, I got some very big news. Big, big news. See, I've been working on a salvage arm for a long time, but now it's ready. This gorgeous piece of machinery lets you pull up treasure from the seafloor. I'm gonna see if this thing is ready. Is ready. I'm gonna sell this thing to the first one who gets here. Ready, set, sail! Who's gonna be the lucky customer to claim it? Edo! And that's the end of it. Got all that, sir? Then I'm out of here. I really wish Edo was a girl so then I could make the bad joke of, hey, when it's your time of the month, does that make it the Edo period? Okay, I'm really stupid. Anyway, I was saying that we have a thousand rupees. Uh, one day I'll get through this thought. Does your ship have a salvage arm? No. Why do you always want to know what my ship has? You can make a fortune by recovering lost treasure in the bottom of the sea. Gotta get a salvage arm, though. I bet all that... Why are you telling me that... I guess maybe if you didn't get the letter in time, then maybe it makes sense. Uh, it just loves repeating stuff at you. Well, look what the crab dragged in. Get that third sea chart yet? Yes, and I had eight minutes and 34 seconds to spare. Thank you much. Working on getting my time lower. We found a secret mark that we transferred to our southwestern sea chart. And we found out that the Temple of Courage will open with a sun key. I bet that new mark on our chart reveals a spot that's essential to our quest. I see. And uh, since seeing is believing, it's time to believe an old lineback. I say that we go out there. We're bound to find something. So, off to the unknown, Link. Then climb aboard! The open sea calls! Unfortunately for you, I got a race to win. We're not going to be heading off there quite yet, because we got stuff to do. I was saying that we have a thousand rupees, and it wouldn't be too out of the question to go and buy some gems, but I don't want to buy the one on Murkay Isle. I think that because of the point system, I want to give my money to Beetle before anyone else. However, because we also have a salvage arm in question, and that's going to be important for getting us a lot of things, I think that should be the first use of our money. Island is so majestic off in the distance. I love how that one looks. It looks so dramatic with the low angle, the really high cliff, and that, that crane just hanging off of it. It's really memorable. Again, the islands look way better before you dock on them. <laughs> okay, no mail this time. I'm actually kind of glad for that. This is the uh, fateful place where I met my arch nemesis. Hopefully being polite and giving that guy the time of day does not cost me the race. Yes, yes, it's finally complete. The salvage arm will let you reach the bottom of the sea for sunken treasure. Is this guy's arm broken? He's got bandages on his head. This Wow, when you consider that this guy does smithing, that's actually kind of dark. What? Aren't you the shrimplet who bought that cannon from me? And now you want the salvage arm. 
You, did you come racing over here after getting one of my letters? <laughs> you dropped everything to rush over here for my invention. You're a real fan of my work, aren't you? Yeah, you could say that. Come on, you don't have to keep it a secret. I want to sell it to one of my fans. You can't just buy your way through life, son. It's, the, it's passion that counts. So show me just how much you want the salvage arm. Shout with gusto, man. Want the salvage arm? Then make your voice ring out loud and clear. I will decide your price based on that. Okay, go. Capitalism! Not bad. Hmm. For that scream, well... I'll sell the Savage Arm for 300... <laughs> I have floaters in my eyes from that shout, and I also bit down in my cheek with my wisdom, too. <laughs> um... Uh, okay, that's a pretty good price. It's, uh, all right, it's weird. So that's the second best price you can get. It varies from 200 to 1,000. And uh, I'll, I'll take it. Even though I went through a great deal of pain and I was hoping to do a little bit better. <laughs> Still walking around with a bunch of rupees, eh? Doesn't surprise me one bit. Okay, take it then. The salvage arm is yours. We don't have to pretend like we don't have this anymore! <laughs> Even though it's been seen in multiple times up to this point when we've been fishing and in various cutscenes, we finally have it. Something tells me you were intended to get this a lot sooner than you actually did in the final game, and it creates a lot of weird continuity errors. Yeah, I've had a lot of people telling me, like, hey, you have the salvage arm. Why aren't you using it? No, I didn't. The, it's really strange. I wasn't making jokes. It legitimately just is a really stupid quirk with this game. Hoo-hoo, you got the salvage arm. Yeah, I bet you heard it from the other room. You didn't actually yell you didn't actually yell salvage arm really loud, did you? Savvy guy like you would know to merely snap your fingers. You look pretty silly if you really yelled. I guess that's how you get the 200 rupees. At least I didn't try it again though, knowing that now. Okay, got my hands on the salvage arm. You can use that to haul up treasures from the bottom of the sea. You about ready to set sail then? Yes, I think I am. I think the inside of my cheek might be slightly bleeding. I can like taste iron in my mouth now. <laughs> uh, only me, only me. All right. Well, you can see that all around the ocean, there are many, many opportunities for us to get some treasure, as well as one that we aren't going to be getting for a long time. I probably better erase that before I don't notice it whenever we can go up there. There's seven spots to go down and look for treasure. And I think that should be our first order of business because we've been getting these treasure charts for so darn long. And there's been no use for them up until now. Once the spot has been found, oh, I love the smell of salvage. All right, kid, I'm going to tell you about how to use the salvage arm. All kinds of treasure rests at the bottom of the sea. Use the salvage arm to pull that treasure up. See the bar controlling the arm at the bottom of the screen? Tap and drag this right or left to move the arm under the water. Move it up or down to adjust how fast the arm moves. But there are octo mines that will down there that will explode if you touch them. It takes a steady hand to move the arm carefully and steer clear of them. It's uh, really rough for Link because you can't possibly see this from his point of view, so good thing we're here to just kind of be the god that controls things. There are lots of rupees to collect while doing this. They are pretty much just green rupees, so I don't really want to go too far out of my way and risk damaging the salvage arm for this. It has essentially five hits on it. Not heart containers, but just normal hits, hence the not heart appearance that they have. It is kind of fun if you're experienced to try to get all of the um, all the rupees, but I just try to not go for it. Some octo mines will blow around, and they can be a little hard to avoid. It also blows the arm to and fro if the uh, current that they're blowing out hits them. And then by going all the way down, I learned the hard way that this part is a lot more important than one might think. If the claw opens not on the treasure chest, it will actually count as a miss and you have to start over. It's just like fishing where you do have to be very accurate with what you're doing. It's not that hard to do once you know it. And, oh god, you're seeing there how rough it is. Our hitbox is also larger. Just trying to be very steady, very careful. 
I don't want to be near the edges of the screen either because sometimes the Octomines come out from the sides of the screen and they can blindside you if you're hanging out around there too much. Uh, going up. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm going to go for all the rupees. <laughs> I try to say like, oh, it's not really a smart idea. I don't want to risk my salvage arm, but I can't help it, okay? I really can't. It's just, it's a hard life. Pretty fun little mini game. I think I do like the fishing a little bit better, but this definitely is no slouch itself. The first of many treasure chests that we're gonna be uncovering here today is not dropped on top of the prow that was clearly hanging over the water. A wood handrail, finally more ship parts. That's just one example of what can be gotten from this. On to number two. Oh, I can't wait. Ugh, got hit a second time. Getting hit an average of once per treasure. Red rupee. Red rupee. Sometimes they have some more valuable rupee types. Red, I think, is the highest that can be seen down here. No big green. There's not even any purple rupees in all of Phantom Hourglass. But reds are definitely nice. Ugh, couldn't do much about that one. I was committed. This animation really bothers me because it really should not be landing where it is. That's why it cuts away. Sand of hours, one minute is added to the phantom hourglass. If that first one didn't woo you, oh, that one definitely wooed you. Tournez à la page trois. Hello. I had a monkey made out of me. That's a big green rupee. <laughs> Wow, uh, I think I'd seen those before and just didn't notice that they were bigger than the other green rupees that were not on screen at the current time. Never mind, that's really lucrative stuff. I am so sorry I called the red rupees nice. Oh no, okay, we are down to one unit of health. Whenever taking out the salvage arm to play, it is a little bit of a gamble because you're basically wagering that you're not going to get hit more times than it can possibly muster. Whenever the salvage arm is dinged up and you don't want to risk it, first off, take your treasure and get a strange chimney. <laughs> it looks like it exploded. It's the old potato in the tailpipe gag. When the salvage arm is beaten up enough, go back to Murkay Isle. Inside the shipyard's building, come on in, you drifted into the shipyard, got parts? I'll set up your ship. Need a salvage arm fixed? Do that too. Hey, that salvage arm is pretty banged up. Gonna be useless soon. I'll fix it for you at just 50 rupees. The price will double to 100 if the salvage arm is destroyed. Taking it in right before it gets destroyed is the way to go. But of course, if you get too cocky, you might wind up paying it anyway. It's a pretty clever way of keeping us engaged in what we're doing. Yes, our ship has a salvage arm now. You have a salvage arm now! You can dredge up sunken chests! And to amass a fortune from the sea's hidden spoils, I envy you! Don't forget to take your finds to the treasure teller. Oh. He'll value them for you. You'll be rich beyond my wildest dreams. Rich, rich, rich! Now, here's the secret to share with you. I've come across a treasure map. Want the treasure map? Then hand over 50 rupees. Thanks a bunch. And here you go. I'm gonna make note, uh, if it'll let me, no it won't. They say X marks the spot. Sail there and use your salvage arm. I'm making a note of the 50 rupees that were paid in for this just to see if it was worth it after the fact. I don't remember what this particular one gives you because I don't really think about which NPC gave me what whenever I do it. But he was telling us about the treasure teller on the island. If we go, I believe it's into this pretty nice looking cottage. Wow. Uh. I don't know if I've ever been in here before. This is a nice place, whoever lives here. I'm sure there's photos of their loving family on the wall that I can't see because my scope of the world is through a filter that is 256 by 192 in resolution, but I'm sure it's nice. Hey, the treasure teller is finally open. Take your ship parts and other great finds in there to have them appraised. The guy will also buy your stuff so you can really rake in the rupees in there. Wouldn't it be nice if you could swap treasure with friends too? Ah, uh, someday. That whole treasure trading, the whole treasure trading thing came in at a very good time because now we can actually find out what all of those items do. This guy's face looks painful to exist. Cackle dee dee, I'm the teller of treasures. 
Bobbles Beauty- He doesn't have a bottom jaw, I'm sorry. I can sort tripe from treasure. That was sorry our belongings. I'm sure there's gotta be lots of spit on the ground. Oh, he does have a bottom jaw, never mind. <laughs> okay, it was just- It was just very small underneath him. Let's start out with the pink coral. God, what's this? A common sort of thing, 150 rupees at best. What about the pearl necklace? A common sort of thing, 150 rupees at best. Dark pearl loop. Such a trifle, 50 rupees or no more. That's racist. Zora scale, 800 rupees, hello. Got one of those. Uh, I'm gonna save the Gora number for last because that's been the kind of the big mystery. Rudo crown. I'd put that pr Dang, I guess Princess Rudo does actually have fans. Who would have known? Now for the big one, the Goron Amber. This has been the mystery that's been with us for a long time. Really? All of that hype. <laughs> you can see that there are two treasures that we have yet to obtain any of. Which ones am I gonna sell? Well, the answer is none. I recommend only going to the treasure teller and parting with treasures when you need the money. As of right now, 800 rupees is pretty good for me, and my plan is just to sell items as I deem it necessary, not for the sake of having a more full wallet at any given time. I recommend that you do the same thing, because being nice and so you don't get screwed over later, it is possible that these items can have other uses down the road. Give me my claw machine winning. This one is a log prow, which looks very funny on its own. In the waters of the Northwestern. Big green, big green, big green, big green. All the wasted years of thinking those were just regular old green rupees and ignoring them being like, huh, no, I ain't risking my health for that. You bet I'm risking my health for 100 rupees. Oh man, did I come up with a load of guff again? Simple wheel ship part. Iron hull. It's a little hideous, but looks like it has some defensive potential. Now to see what the big 5-0 paywall had behind it. There's one more use of salvaging that I'd like to go over and it's not at all immediately obvious. You can do it at any time. Even though there's just gonna be some Octomines and Rupees down there if there's no treasure. But you can also cancel out of it. And doing so cancels any enemy encounters that were currently going on. I guess that's why they call it salvation. Another minute for the Phantom Hourglass. That was worth 50 Rupees. Boy, it really is true what they say. Selling your soul to Tiger Tiger makes you very overpowered. That was quite the treasure hunt. Ended up getting a lot more powerful. We're introduced to multiple new mechanics. We're doing pretty well, actually. I think I broke a thousand rupees as well, did I? Um, Here, Grass, you're gonna be a noble sacrifice for me being able to check that without having to go into the pause menu. Yes, 1037. There's one last thing that I'd like to do. We didn't get a single duplicate ship part, so not the right place. I'm sorry, the house is just so eye-catching and cool, and lady, do you live here? Heard that you were looking for Astrid. She has wondrous talent for studying a person's deepest needs and divining where that person should go next. Seek her when you're lost. Really is true that old people are behind the times. Anyway, going into the treasure teller's uh, place, we didn't get any duplicate items that I'm interested in selling right away. So instead, I'd like to show you what happens if you try to sell one of Linebeck's personal ship parts, the Passable Prow. God, what's this? That's barely worth a mention, sir, no interest. I'd say it's a shame Linebeck couldn't be here to hear that kind of an insult, but you know him, he wouldn't listen anyway. That's everything that the Salvage Arm is able to do for us for the time being. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, we're gonna do a little bit of shopping around, seeing what these rupees can do for us, and then we're gonna head to the location specified on the map. See you guys then.